that, you know, a lot of people look over because I guess, you know, certain stuff that's in there. But this lesson that happened to one of the false prophets, it happened in a two-month time. Ven the God vengeance came in two months. And if you're not careful, you'll look over that and you'll say, well, this and that. But the, the point is that Jeremiah did nothing to this prophet prophesy what God said. And this prophet, you know, prophesied falsely or said something falsely and mocked Jeremiah and, and God. And so God had to show him. <laughs> you know, when you come against God and his people, when you come against Christ and his people, God will avenge you. It's just that simple. If you doing what God called you to do, if you know that's what God called you to do, and somebody come against you and God call you to do that, God will avenge you. There's no if, ands, maybe, buts about it. God will avenge you. And, <clears throat> and sometimes he'll avenge you speedily. And sometimes we might not know that whatever that person going through, it might be the vengeance of God. We don't know. They probably did something to you two months ago or three months ago. And all of a sudden, all hell breaking loose in their life. And it might be because of what they said or done to you. But we don't know. But that's why we still must continue to what? Pray for your enemies. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Because it's God that gives the vengeance, not us. See, when we bring our wrath on people, that's where we mess up. And we tie God's hands up because we're not doing it the way God said to do it. So when we do stuff the way Christ said to do it, it works 100% of the time. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Jeremiah 28. I'm going to read this little quick little verses for you. Jeremiah chapter 28. While you turn there, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for another day that you've given us, Father. Lord, we just ask that you to give us wisdom, Father, and understanding of your word, Lord. Let it go out more clear and more in depth to the hearers, Father. Thank you once again. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's Jeremiah chapter 28. And, uh, and I want you to see how quick this vengeance came from God to this prophet Hananiah. He said, and it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year. And in the fifth month, underline fifth month, because you're going to need that fifth month. There's a reason. The fifth month that Hananiah, son of Azar, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of, of all the people, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. So he said, God said it. Y'all understand? The God of Israel said, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now we know if you ever read... <laughs> All the prophets of Jer you, ever, you ever read Jeremiah, you know God ain't say that. But he's prophesying this. He said, within two full years, this is what Hananiah is prophesying now. Within two full years, now if you're not a student of God, where are you? I actually think God said this. Because he said, thus said the Lord God. So you actually think this is God talking. He said, within two full years will I bring again unto this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. He said, I will bring again the place of Jehoiakimiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, which all the captivities of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now, this is Hananiah, he's prophesying. Then the prophet, now this is what Jeremiah said. Then the prophet said unto the prophet Ananiah, in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You go. You prophesy. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And this is Jeremiah telling him. Now. The Lord do so. Let the Lord do it. This is what Jeremiah said. 
He said, the Lord performed thy words. That's what he said. He said, letting the Lord perform who words? His words. Because them won't God's words. He said, let the Lord perform thy words with thou hast prophesied. You see what Jeremiah is telling him? You prophesied this, so let the Lord perform the, the word that you prophesied. To bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. See, Jeremiah is telling him, look, look, fella, you know them your words. <laughs> them your words you speaking. You understand what Jeremiah, I mean, you know what Jeremiah kind of mocking it. Because Jeremiah already know God ain't telling him that. See, when you are a true or a true man and woman of God, when you study God's word and when you hear something that's not quite right, you already know that's that joke of fraud. <laughs> you already said, no, that don't even sound right. That ain't nowhere in the scripture. Where is that at? How you get that? How you come up with that? Where you get that from? So this is Jeremiah kind of mocking him. He said, nevertheless, Hear thou now this word that I speak in the ears and in the ears of all the people. Now you hear what I got to say. You, we don't hear what you had to say. Now you hear what I got to say. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. This is what we did. The prophets which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Then you will know that God sent you once it come to pass. Verse 10. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck. Remember, God put the yoke on Jeremiah's neck. God told Jeremiah to put the, you put this yoke on your neck, symbolizing that they was going into captivity with king of Babylon. He's going to put a yoke on your neck. So here is Hananiah breaking the yoke. Listen to what he did now. And Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. This is the same yoke God put on Jeremiah. God told Jeremiah to put it on his neck. He said, I will put the yoke on you. So here was Hananiah, he broke the yoke that God put on Jeremiah. That ain't a good thing, you know. <laughs> Hananiah was prophesying good things, prophesying, you know, prosperity and all that other good stuff. This is what happened. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord. He said it, God said it. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years, and the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah just said, okay, then, if that's what you want to believe, go ahead. But God already told Jeremiah to prophesy that Babylon, that Nebuchadnezzar, he's my servant, he's going to put y'all into captivity. Y'all going into slavery. Simple as that. Because you're hard-headed, you don't want to listen. And God told him, if you go peaceably, if you don't fight, you're going to prosper when you go. Now, how, how are you not going to go when God said, if you go peaceably, you're going to prosper? I would love to be in captivity, Lord. <laughs> if you're behind it, put me in. If, if I'm going to prosper, if I don't fight against you telling me if I don't fight, if I don't buck up against King of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, that I'm going to prosper while in slavery, in captivity, why wouldn't I go? <laughs> He's telling them. This is what Jeremiah told him. But he said, if you fight against Nebuchadnezzar, it ain't going to be good for you. Because you can't go against God's word. You never fight against God's word. You won't win. You never, you never win. Verse 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. Now you listen to what Jeremiah said. Now, how many months was, what month were we in? Fifth month. Then the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet after that Hananiah the prophet has spoken, has broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, go and tell Hananiah, this I want, I want you to go tell him something. <laughs> I need you to go tell him something. Saying, thus saith the Lord, thou hast broken the yoke of wood, 
But thou shalt make for them yoke of iron. See, now God said, okay then, it was wood. Now I'm to put yoke of iron on. Now, now everybody know that wood is easier to break than iron. So if God telling you, I put a yoke of wood, that would, you know, just telling you it was easy. But now I'm putting a yoke of iron on him. It ain't going to be easy to break. He said, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the necks of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. They're going to bow down to him. They're going to serve him. Because he basically ran that whole region. Why? Because God said it. that's who he wanted. God said, Nebuchadnezzar is my servant. He's going to do my bidding for me. He's going to do what I tell him to do. He said, and I have given him the beast of the field also. God said, I give him all the animals. <laughs> even the animals ain't even going to reject Nebuchadnezzar. They on the Nebuchadnezzar control. He said, then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet. Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent thee. God ain't sent you. But thou makest this people to trust in a lie. You understand what happened when people say stuff that God didn't say they make you trust in a what? Lie. That ain't God don't like that. God don't like his children trusting in a lie. No matter what the lie is, he don't want you to trust in the lie if he ain't said it. Listen to what happened. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This is what God telling Jeremiah to tell Hananiah. This year thou shalt die because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So when you teach people not to do what God says, not to do what the word of God says, you teach rebellion. That's just simple. Now listen to how long it took God to do his vengeance. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. How many months were that? Two months after he prophesied. So vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance don't belong to us. We don't have to worry about what. People prophesy different. People talk about you. People do anything to try to stop you from doing what God, what God called you to do. You don't have to worry about it. I promise you, you don't. Because vengeance belongs to God. It always belongs to God. And it's going to always continue to belong to God. We don't give the vengeance. Lord knows, Lord knows sometimes we won't do <laughs> Oh, man, we want to, woo. Boy, he, they say something else to me. You go to cracking your knuckles. <laughs> You're going to do it. You, you, you get mad and, and, and everything else. But vengeance belongs to who? God. Vengeance don't belong to me. Lord knows we be wanting to, especially when they say bad stuff about you when you know you're doing the work of God. But you don't have to worry about it. Vengeance belongs to God. Romans chapter 12. And I just wanted to read that to show you how long it took God to give vengeance to that false prophet that prophesied lies. Romans chapter 12. Verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. And it reads, it said, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one another, one to another, with brotherly love and honoring, preferring one another. And honoring, preferring one another. What does that mean, preferring one another? You put somebody, you know, above yourself. You, you prefer, you know, you helping your, your brother out and you, you know, you preferring him and everything else. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I mean, have some fire about you when you serve the Lord. Shouldn't be dragging around, oh, poor me, and all that other good stuff that we do. Have some life about you when you're doing what God called you to do. Enjoy it. He said, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue instantly in prayer. Dis distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. 
Bless and curse not. Ooh, Lord knows that's what we do sometimes. Oh, man, we'll cuss them out now. <laughs> rejoice with them that do rejoice. We're supposed to rejoice with the ones that, that's rejoicing. And weep with them that weep. When, you know, somebody's weeping and crying, weep with them. You know, you know back in the days they used to have, I know in, in the biblical days, they used to have uh, what you call them type of uh, uh, people that they hire to weep. <laughs> they used to hire people to weep, <laughs> you know, to, to comfort people. He said, be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. But consent to uh, men of low estate, be not wise in your own consent. Consent to men of low estate. I mean, everybody ain't going to have the high, you know, stuff or whatever you call it. They ain't up, in the, up there where, you know, like the um, rich men and all that other stuff. You're going to still have a lot. You still have a lot of poor people. Still people of low estate, low value, low, low self-esteem. And you have a lot of that in the church, people that have low self-esteem. Build them up. He said, recompense no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. No crooked stuff. He said, if it be possible. Now look at the condition. If it be possible. As much as lying in you. That means, ooh, you got to work hard now. Live peaceably with all men. <laughs> he said, what lies in you? Now, you know, you might have one of them rough, crazy neighbors. <laughs> but <laughs> but if, it, if whatever lies in you, he said, live peaceably. You might have one of them cussing neighbors. You might have one, a neighbor that got bad animals. You might have a neighbor that's trashy. You might have a neighbor that's, but it's what he said, live peaceably. If it is possible. But he's also said, as much as lieth in you. That means you give all you got to try to live peaceably with that person, with the people in your neighborhood, people around you. He said, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Why not that give place to it? Move out of the way. Not your wrath. He said, do what now? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Move out of the way. That's giving place to whose wrath? God's wrath, not yours. And boy, we, ooh, man. He said, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. You don't have to worry about it. God will repay, but we must give what? What to say? Place. If you don't give place, how God gonna repay? If you trying to do it, how God gonna repay? So we must give space or place that same word. Let God do it. You know what? My hands tied. I'm done with it, Lord. And watch God give His word. Now don't be mad with the outcome that God give now, cause it's for your benefit. For my benefit. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Mm -mm. Your enemy, you see a lot of us see our enemy walking beside the road, tire busted. We just splash mud on him. <laughs> Look at that sucker go right there. I'm glad his car broke down. I ain't getting no ride. <laughs> oh, man. If he thirsts, give him drink. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your throat is dry. <laughs> For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. All that heat stuff that he got, all that animosity that he got towards you, if you would just feed him, if you would just give him a bottle of water, it don't matter. Just do something nice for him. When the opportunity presents itself, and you know you can do something nice for him, do it. The Bible said it'll do what? Heap coals of fire. That means all that whatever he got against you. You overcome evil with good. 
You don't overcome evil with evil. He said, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. It's just that simple. You overcome the evil. You, that's all you got to do, do good to people. You be good to them, how can they be mad with you for no reason? Why they going to be mad with you? Because you're steady doing good. And then, and then if they still treating you bad and doing guess what? Vengeance belongs to God. Y'all understand? Everybody don't have certain, every, they some people, they some people on this earth, uh, stuff is wrong with, some, some people's stuff wrong with them because of vengeance. Wrath of God. Satan ain't bothering everybody. <laughs> I understand. They some people did God's children wrong and they paying for it. It's just that simple. They paying for doing God's children wrong. They paying for it. Just like the man in Acts that perverted the way of, uh, of they were trying to get people converted. The false prophet, he got blinded for a season. Why? Because he was perverting the way of Christ. Not wanting people to come to Christ. So the, the prophet, he got blinded for a season. You can't do God's people all kind of way. You can't come in the way, the plan of God. You can't do it. God going to move you out of the way one way or another. 2 Thessalonians chapter, chapter 1. God going to move you out of the way one way or another. The enemy that come against you, you don't have to worry about them. God will move them, slam out of the way. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. <clears throat> and we're going to start in verse 1. It said, Paul and Silvia and Timothy and to the church of Thessalonians in, the, in, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to give thanks always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all towards each other abounded. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecution and tribulation that ye endure. He said, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of the who? The righteous judgment that they may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, that which ye also suffer. He says, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Seeing it is a what? Righteous thing with who? God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. You wonder why people that trouble you is all sorts of tribulation. It's a righteous thing with God. Because they're troubling you. Y'all understand. God is going to avenge his children. It don't matter what we say. God always going to avenge his children. He said, and to you who are troubled, rest with us. Even the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flame, in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will do vengeance on them that do not obey the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he, when, we, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified in you and in him according to the grace of our God 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. Vengeance belongs to God. Always have, always will belong to God. It don't belong to me. It don't belong to Pastor Rick. It don't belong to Pastor Scott. It belongs to who? God. Now let's go to Luke. Luke 18. We'll finish up in Luke 18 and then Matthew 18. Luke 18. All right. This is the parable of the man. <clears throat> Luke 18, verse 1, it said, And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men are always to pray and not faint. Always pray. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. He said, Saying, There was in a city. A judge would fear not God, neither regarding man. He didn't, you know, he won't, you know, didn't fear God, didn't show God no reverence, and didn't care nothing about man. He said, there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. This is what she told him. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, Boy, this woman ain't worried. Oh, she worried me. Yet because this widow troubleth me. Boy, she worried and pissed out of me. She worried me now. He said, I will avenge her. Lest her continual coming, she weary me. She going to keep on nagging me. So I'm going to avenge her of her adversary. Verse 6. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. God avenge his elect speedily. Why? Because you crying day and night, day and night, day and night. God avenge you. Speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Do you have enough faith to tell God and to say, God, Lord, Lord. He gave you a parable. So God will avenge his elect speedily. Not, you know, well, you know what speedily is, don't you? <laughs> fast, quick, fast, in a hurry. God will avenge us. Vengeance belongs to God. When you realize vengeance belongs to God, then you ain't got to worry about your enemy. Because you already know if something happened to you and you know you're doing the will of God, your enemy going to pay. Or whoever came against you going to pay. But you first got to do what? Pray for them. <laughs> pray for them that persecute you. But we'll pray against them. You know what we'll pray? Lord, I hope you kill them. <laughs> That ain't praying for them. You know that ain't. That's praying against them. <laughs> when you pray for them, you ask asking, Lord, Lord, bless them. Lord, touch them. Lord, give them your mind, Lord. They don't know no better, Lord. And then God will avenge you because you prayed for them. But when you start praying against them, mm, Lord, you need to come and strike them down. Not dead now, Lord. Lord, you need to come and do it now, Lord. Lord, you, oh, man, then you go to speaking in a tongue. Oh, shalom, uh. <laughs> Matthew 18. Verse 2. <laughs> but you pray for them. You got to pray for your enemies. That very prayer that you pray for your enemies in closing might be the very thing that can turn them. Maybe they need the wrath of God on them. And the Bible tells us that the wrath of God abided on the children of disobedience. That means it's on the children of disobedience. Already on them. Matthew 18, in closing. Give you the next couple of verses. He said, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus and said, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Because kids will believe everything you say without even questioning you. And y'all know they believe you. 
Kids believe that a, a fat man come down your chimney and bring toys <laughs> till they get older. But that's what they believe. Cause that's what you told them. Y'all understand? That's what Jesus said. Believe him. If you believe him like the little child, then my gracious. That's major faith. Cause that, you can't tell that child that a, a, fat man, a, a fat man don't come down the chimney <laughs> and bring his toys. That's what they believe. He said, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humble yourself as the little child. Little children humble themselves. You know why kids act the way they act today? Because we're not teaching them the ways of God. It's simple. The Bible says raise up a child in the way it should go. Not the way it want to go. The way it should go. And we know the way children should go. We know the way children should behave. But that's what we must do. Raise them up. The, and that's why some don't come back. Because we not we raise them the way they want to go. They won't come back. But if you raise them the way they should go. They'll stray. But they'll always do what? Come back to that foundation. Because they already know. It's already in them. That ain't the way they need to go. And whosoever shall receive one of these such little child in my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me. See, know what it's saying. Now, if we believe like a little child, that means we're in the category of this little child. So if anybody offends us and we believe like the little child, he said, believe in me. It were better for him that a millstone were that better a millstone were hang about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now this is Christ said it, not me. Don't be getting mad with me. He said, if anybody offend this little child, and Christ said that we have faith like a little child, so I mean we have faith like a little child, that means we are in this category. So if anybody offends us and we believe like the little kids believe. It'd be better for that person to have a millstone tied around his neck and be thrown in the sea if they come against you. He said, woe unto the, the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe unto the man by whom the offense is coming. Woe unto that person that keep coming up against you. He said, wherefore, if thy hand and thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or main rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. You mean whatever sin that is holding you, cast it off. You understand? He said, if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. Not your literal eye. And, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into the life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire. He said, take heed you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, in where? In heaven, his angels or their angels do always behold my, my be always Behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. That means the angel already know he beheld the face of God. Already ready to go at whatever God say he got to do. For that little child. Or for that person that believes like a little child. That angel is already got the face, already in God's face. They're ready to be dispatched. To avenge you. For the Son of Man is come to save that which is which was lost. Vengeance belongs to God. Your angel or that angel have the face of God ready to be dispatched because people come up against you. Y'all understand, it ain't no accident that when people come up against you, they all of a sudden they die. 
by a couple weeks later or a couple months. It ain't no accident. Some stuff is not an accident. Some stuff is God avenging you. It's sad to say it hurt people feeling, but sometimes that's what God got to do. Because if you pervert the way of God, if you pervert the way of Christ, you stop people from hearing the word of God, you stop people from wanting to receive Christ, God will avenge that. By any, by however means you want to do it, Lord, do it. Because he's going to do it according to what his word already said. And you can't change it. You just got to pray for your enemies. When you pray for your enemies, stuff happened to your enemies. And it's not your doing that it happened to them. It's God's doing. That's God's business. You don't know the heart of your enemy. God know the heart of your enemy. If we think we know the heart of we, you don't know the heart of these people. Some people are so wicked, they ain't going to change. God know they ain't going to change. And there's some people that are wicked and God know they will change. But the problem is we don't know. That's why he tells you to pray for them. You understand? We have to pray for our enemies because vengeance belongs to God. And when you know that vengeance belongs to God, then he will avenge you of your adversary. <laughs> always have, always will. And not in a slothful manner, slow manner, the Bible says speedily. We just got to trust the process of God. When people come against you, pray for them. Fast and pray for them and see what happens quickly. You can see it. We might not know it that that thing happened to them because they came up against you or somebody that's doing the will of God. We might not know that was the reason, but God knows. God knows exactly why they're having tribulation, why they're having trouble. They're coming up against God's people. Look at the people that come up against God's people. Look at the trouble that you have. You have no idea the trouble that people are having in their lives because they're just coming up against God's people. And they're thinking it's a coincidence. Oh, I got caught trouble. Oh, I got this trouble. Oh, man, I got a double lot bill. Oh, man, I got all kinds of trouble coming. Man, I ain't won't get no better. I got fired today. My boss man ain't acting right. My boss woman ain't acting right. I got rolled up. Man, I'm allowed to get fired. You have no idea what the vengeance of God will do to people that come up against you for even sharing the gospel or saying this or saying that or getting people to, to, to know God better. That's God's way of doing his business. And he's going to continue to do it that way anyway, whether you like it or not. So... <laughs> I tend to obey what God said. And remember, the wrath of God is not on his children. The wrath of God ain't never been on his children. The wrath of God always been on the children of disobedience. You're a child of the king. You're not a child of disobedience. So you never have to worry about wrath of God. Nobody that knows Christ and believes Christ and worships Christ and, 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 and do what God said and do what Christ said have to ever worry about the wrath of God. No child of God have to worry about the wrath of God. Y'all understand that. Only the ones 